Hey, a pleasant good day, everybody. This is Sports Fanatic News. I'm Joe Boric, and this is going to be the preview to our shorthanded Flyers playing the Pittsburgh Penguins. Um, of course, the shorthanded Philadelphia Flyers, uh, according to the great Jamie Bascal of Flyers Nitty Gritty, check out his work, are going to have Fairby, Lord, and Atkinson. Of course, I should stop saying these as first, second, because lines, they kind of just intertwine and swing. It's not the same as it was back in the day with true first, second, third, fourth. But Broussard, Frost, JVR, Bunneman in the lineup again to add a little bit more jam against the Pittsburgh Penguin rival Penguins. That actually makes sense to me. Obviously, it seems like Yo's a guy that implements a little bit more speed than he does the jam at times, but that makes sense to me with Bunham in there, Hayes, and then Wilman. Lindblom, Brown, and McEwen then rounds out the lines, York, York, excuse me, and Braun yet again, Zamula and Risto talk about a physically um, enticing line, uh, Zamula and Risto and a very, um, well, what's the right word, uh, a very daunting line for the opposing team, I guess to say, and a very scary line for the opposing team to coming at you size-wise. Uh, going to be interesting to see how those two guys skate uh, with each other. And then Yandel and Connaughton, um, who obviously have seen each other here and have also seen pairing time with each other in Florida. They've looked okay together. I think they picked up Connaughton thinking maybe Yandel would get going a little bit squeakier because he's seen a little bit more time with them. He's looked okay with them. Uh, it still hasn't been smooth sailing at all whatsoever for uh, Keith Yandel this season at all. And then Connaughton, like we talked about him and Sealer on Check It Out, the Hockey Writers Inc. podcast is coming out on Steel Flyers. I was on with the great Lance Green and also Steel as well. Um, it's <clears throat> he's Connaughton and Sealer are just seventh defensemen, and they're getting overplayed a lot, and we're seeing the uh, repercussions from having to overplay those guys a lot. If Big Z comes in, has a very good debut, is he fully ready to be up? Probably not, but nobody is ever 100% ready to fully be up. We saw York where some, some of the concerns for him were obviously the physicality. Well, obviously, uh, he was able to have a couple blocks and a couple hits in his first game. So not much of a concern for him to still have to grow. If he's looking this good in this game against a rival, you have to keep him in the lineup. If Big Z looks great against a rival, I would almost say at that point, um, he starts to move up, and he is definitely your seventh defenseman at the very least at that point if you're not keeping him in the lineup rather than the Sealers and the... Um, and it's nothing against those guys. They're solid for what they do. Seventh defenseman being physical, being able to, Connaught and Morsa being able to get the shot on net and be a little bit more offensive if you look at his pro career as a whole between the NHL and AHL. And then Sewer being more just a physical fighting defenseman uh, that can block shots and what have you. They're, they're fine for what they do. It's just these guys are potential future parts and blocks of your defense. So if they're playing well, you might as well just keep them in. That's my two cent on that. So it looks like Big Z will get his debut tonight with Ristol line and going to be interesting to see how that goes because if that line obviously pairs well and we're able to get Risto for what we talked about on the hockey writers Inc., a good value of like say 375 to 423 or something like that um then you would be in a much better spot to be able to keep him because he's not really the value he's at there was more to pay him, like Lance said, for a first-pairing defenseman. He's not really that. He's more of a second. But Big Z, Yuger Zamula, the new Big Z, and Risto, that would be a very daunting line and a very um, scary line for any opponent if that's able to stay together. And then York and Braun looked good in their first game, I thought. Uh, Yandel and Connaughton is the line that has to pick up uh, the pace, or Yandel and Sealer, really, those lines in general, the, that line in general, no matter which grouping it is, uh, need to pick up the pace. And then Carter Hart is going to get the start uh, tonight for the Philadelphia Flyers. Uh, the Flyers, they have to look like they did pre-holiday break. They were playing some better hockey uh, pre-holiday break, they're able to get three out of four points. Offensive-wise, I would like them to see how they did in the Kings game, pushing the pace, getting shots on net. Obviously not the defensive woes of that game. You're going to get spanked by Pittsburgh if you do that. But offensive-wise, I want to see what they were able to do in that game, get the shots on net, push the pace, uh, move better in that game. That was one of their better play games offensively. I don't think it was one of their better play games as a whole, but offensively, it's just they weren't able to get enough past uh, Jonathan Quick, who's having an absolutely stellar season. But pre-break, we played our Achilles heel team, the Devils, well. Uh, we played, obviously, it's Ottawa. Ottawa's Ottawa. We played Ottawa well. But we also played the Vegas Golden Knights well. If you can play in games 
like that where you're able to, I mean, we didn't play them great. We gave up like 45 shots, if I remember correctly, but you battled and you were able to get the win. So if you're able to do that, that's kind of the game, the reason I point out that Vegas game. With how shorthanded we are, the Phantoms, our AHL equivalent, obviously our AHL affiliate, were able to battle to come back against Hershey from 3 nothing yesterday to get one point. They were really shorthanded, obviously with all the guys up with the Flyers, but also Ratcliffe and um, O'Reilly and also Shushko were on COVID protocols right before the game. Well, the Flyers have a plethora of guys on COVID protocol, so that's why I'm kind of pointing to that game, how they had to battle and scratch and claw, but still beat a very solid Vegas team and a very good Vegas team that I think is still going to be a cup contender once all people come back, um, it is a is a very good game to point to because I think that's the scratch and claw type of win they would have to get today. I'll be surprised if the Flyers come out and absolutely spank Pittsburgh because Pittsburgh's the hottest team in hockey right now. And um, the Flyers are so short-handed. Pittsburgh's won nine in a row, in a row, and Crosby is on absolute fire. Uh, he has been dynamite, so I'd be absolutely shocked if they come out and spank them, uh, which I don't see happening. This is going to have to be one of those battle-brewing games, particularly if Tristan Yari is in as well, because he's been Vezina caliber this year. Uh, so if he's in, this is really going to be a battle game. If they give us uh, the Smith, who was good last year, not so good this year, then yeah, that'll make it a little bit easier uh, to try to push the pace like the Flyers did offensively in that Kings game. And then they're just going to have to try to have the battle mentality that they did in that Vegas Golden Knights game a lot more shorthanded, obviously, than they were in that game. But this is going to be a battle. It's going to be a brute battle similar to how the Phantoms had to battle against the Bears so shorthanded yesterday. The Flyers are going to have to do that against their rival, the Pittsburgh Penguins, this evening to be able to try to squeak one point out of this game. Because there's no chance in this game I'm coming into this thinking the Flyers are winning. Uh, but if you can squeak a point out of that game, uh, that would be nice to see for our Philadelphia Flyers. At least you would be able to get one point. Um, out of the game and squeak it out like somehow the Phantoms were able to do um, to scratch and claw and battle against Hershey last night. That's what I want to see from the Flyers tonight. It's going to be a battle mentality that has to get these youngsters that are all in the lineup tonight through, but it's also going to be maybe a high energizer bunny um, energy that this Flyers team is going with all the youngsters in, and that might honestly help to be able to battle uh, to the end and battle to the promised land of at least getting the OT to get the one point. So peace out, everybody. Stay safe. Have a great, safe, and pleasant day. Please continue to subscribe down below or above on the EZDs widget to help us get to our goal of 195 by the end of January. Peace out, everybody.